Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the limit comparison test. This is one of my favorite tests for checking if series converge or diverge. It is so much better than the direct comparison test, which is like my least favorite. But the limit comparison test is going to work great, especially for series that involve polynomials, such as this one. And it has a bunch of other uses as well. So before we look at some example problems, let's actually talk about how the limit comparison test works. So first you start with your series, doesn't matter where you're starting at zero, one or whatever, or what your series is. The first thing you wanna do is you want to guess whether the series is going to converge or diverge. There's no easy way to say converge or diverge. It really just comes with practice and you'll get the hang of it after a while. Then we want to compare our series to some other series, b sub n, which is usually gonna be a p series because p series are the easiest ones to use for limit comparison test and direct comparison test. And whatever series you're comparing to has to do the same thing as your guess. In other words, if you choose converge, you have to choose a p series that converges, for instance. And then this is what you do with the limit comparison test. You take the limit as n goes to infinity of the fraction b sub n over a sub n. Technically, there's supposed to be absolute values here. And it does not matter if the b sub n or the a sub n is on top. In other words, you could also do this if you wanted to, and you'll get the same result. Now, you're going to get one of two things when it comes to the limit comparison test. Number one, you will get some finite non-zero number, such as 5, 12, negative 2 fifths, 4,000. It just can't be zero and it can't be infinity. So not zero or infinity. If this is the case, then the result is both series will either converge, if that was your guess, or diverge, if that was your guess. And the second conclusion, if you do get infinity, or zero, unfortunately, then it means the test was inconclusive and you have to try again. So that's everything in terms of what you need to know to use the limit comparison test. Now let's look at some examples. So the first example we have today is n equals zero to infinity, fraction bar. The numerator is 4n and the denominator is n squared plus 2n plus 1. So if I wanna use limit comparison test here, first I have to compare it to something. My advice is look at the leading terms like 4n and n squared. So like 4n divided by n squared is really just four over n. And this is what you should compare it to. You should compare to, I mean, I don't have to do four over n, I can just do one over n. But I know this series is going to diverge because it's the harmonic series or it's a P series where P equals one. So either way, I know it's gonna diverge. That's gonna be my guess. My guess is going to be diverges for this one. So then A sub N was the original here. B sub N, the thing I'm comparing to is one over N. So I'm gonna do the limit as N goes to infinity of absolute value, not that that's super important, but whatever, of one over N divided by 4n over n squared plus 2n plus 1. And now if I want to solve this, this is a complex fraction, so I have to multiply by the reciprocal. That's going to be 1 over n times n squared plus 2n plus 1 divided by 4n, and the absolute value signs really don't matter that much. So then combining like terms, the numerator is going to be n squared plus 2n plus 1, and the denominator is going to be 4n squared. So now I gotta find the limit as n goes to infinity. Here, the degrees are equal, so I have a nice shortcut for us. You just divide the leading terms. So this is really just n squared over 4n squared. n squared cancels, and we get 1 fourth. Now is that good or bad? It's great, because 1 fourth is not zero, or infinity, which means it's some finite non-zero number, and both series are going to do the same thing. So both series diverge by the limit 
comparison test. And there we go, that's it. Now I have one more for us. Let's say it's the series from n equals two to infinity of three over two n squared minus six. So if I wanna solve this one, first I have to compare it to one. Probably a good idea to compare it to three over two n squared, or really just one over n squared will work. I can ignore the coefficients. So this is what I'm comparing it to. This is my b sub n. And I know one over n squared is a p series where p equals two. So I know this series converges. So this is going to be my guess. My guess is converges this time. So again, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Limit n goes to infinity, fraction bar, absolute value, one over n squared divided by three over two n squared minus six. Again, we have a complex fraction, so I am going to multiply this by the reciprocal, and it looks like this. And then I just multiply across, numerator is two n squared minus six, denominator is three n squared, and now I just gotta take the limit as n goes to infinity here. Again, the degrees are equal. That's how you know if you're doing it right, by the way. The degrees should always be equal. If they are not equal, then it will not work. You'll get inconclusive. So then I just look at the leading terms again. It's two n squared over three n squared. The n squareds cancel, and we'll get a final answer of two thirds. Now, because two thirds is not zero or infinity, it means both series are going to converge. And then we say by the limit comparison test, which I'll just write LCT for short. And there, that's it. You can now solve a ton of problems on your own using the limit comparison test. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.